And I, and I don't recall, did, was there a double opt-in on, uh, on your site? No, nope. Okay. That's another thing we could talk about right there. <laughs> okay. I, I've heard some pros and cons about that, too. I've heard that uh, um, a lot of people say don't use the double opt-in feature, and then some people say absolutely use the double opt-in feature. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> definite yeah. opinions on that. Okay. I looked around to see if there was any statistics on exactly um, uh, exactly what you what would happen double versus single opt in, mm-hmm. and I couldn't find any really hard evidence one way or the other. Okay. And I talked with uh, some. I talked with AWeber's people and. They said, of course, you should do this, and they gave me some pretty flimsy reasons why, because they talked about, well, it's going to insulate you against spam complaints. If too many people complain of spam, then you can you have proof that they double opted in, and so you don't have to worry about it you know, or anything like that. But, you know, really, if you're sending out decent stuff, you don't have to worry about spam complaints anyways. And, uh, and they said something about the responsiveness of your readers and it is true that if you have people double opt in, then if you've got an email list full of people who have double opted in, then that means that, well, they visit their email on a fairly regular basis. And so, yeah, you're going to have a better response uh, than if you have a list of people that are single opt in, you know, just because, uh, yeah. But here's what I found. So I started two email lists. One was double opt-in, one was single opt-in. Other than that, other than that, there was no difference whatsoever. Okay. And so after, I forget how long it took, but I got a thousand people on the double opt-in list. Mm-hmm. And I looked at the single opt-in list, and there were a thousand two hundred and forty-nine people on that one. Wow. So number one, I got an extra twenty. Twenty percent. Yeah. Twenty-five. Yeah. And yeah. I said, okay, and that's one reason I tried this out is because I looked at my statistics and every day, you know, if I had 20 people who signed up for something, then a fourth to a third of them weren't opting in. Yeah. And I was losing them. I, I kind of freaked out at that point sure. because, sure. you know, we're talking about, that's a lot of people, that's 249 extra people on your list. Exactly. And so yeah. I'm presuming that a thousand people would have opted in if it were double opt-in, but they didn't have to. And so they're on my list still, these responsive people. Mm -hmm. And then I've got another 249 people who apparently would not have, you know, gone and double opted in or they would have missed the email or something. So, but they're on my list too now on the single opt-in one. And those are, those are the two lists I had to work with. And so the next thing was, all right, so are we getting any, uh, are people less, what are the stats on both uh-huh. of them? Uh-huh. And I'm going off the top of my head here, sure. but you know, I sure. think you know there's a 20% increase. Is that right? 20 years or 25? 25. Well, increase? let's see. You're saying there's uh, you got 249 additional. Um, additional. So yeah, it would probably work out to more like 20% uh, greater. It was 20% greater. Yeah. yeah 20% more right. yeah. people in the single right. option. So I was looking to see if for some reason the open rates or the click-through rates or anything like that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was 20% was uh, proportionally less. Okay. Right? And and it wasn't. The click-through rates and everything were roughly the same. The single opt-in had, were a bit lower, mm-hmm. but but the numbers were higher. Gotcha. As in, so if 100 people on the double opt-in click-through, 105 people click-through mm-hmm. on the uh, you know, single opt-in, and so the they were less responsive as a percentage, mm-hmm. but they were more responsive as a group, as in the number of individuals. As a whole. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. So. Well, that, that answers I, that question. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, and then I sold something. I think I gave something away for just a seller, you know, like a dollar for the mm-hmm. first month or something like that. Sure. And I had, if I recall, like twelve people from the double opt-in mm-hmm. signed up for it. But then those 13 or 14 from the single opt-in signed up for it. Wow, okay. And so if you look at the straight-up percentages, you know, those extra 249 people you could say were not as responsive. Mm -hmm. But they were somewhat responsive. And, you know, that's – they were – just numbers-wise, they were – that list was more responsive. Well, you've got two two over 12 also, right? So, uh, 
you know, that, that's the other side of it. It's actually much more effective uh, when we look at it in those terms. Right. Right. Okay. So anyways, that was the idea. And so, okay. you know, anything that email services tell you about why you should do double opt-in, what it boils down to is they're just interested in uh, in kind of covering their own rears here mm-hmm. because, because Yahoo and Gmail and those places like to see double opt-in and, and it makes it so that the spam complaints are lower for sure, I, sure. I, I would imagine. Well, I, I, could, I could go check that actually. Anyways, I've t- changed both these email lists to single opt-in since and so my data is not as good. And you know what? I I lost the data that I collected. And so I'm telling you this out of memory. Okay. I wish I had the hard numbers because it would have been so nice. And and I put them someplace and I have not found them. I they just disappeared on my okay. computer here someplace. They're oh, here right. somewhere. Yeah, so anyways, awesome. I but this is so this is me going off of my own memory here. Well, that, that that's, that's you, you cemented that for me. I mean, that that makes uh, a lot more. Uh, it, it makes more sense. Um, and is there? Have you ever tried? Um, and maybe there makes no. This makes no sense either. Have you ever attempted to to ask for a um, an additional opt-in after they've been on the list for a while? Or would that be counterproductive? Maybe that would be probably counterproductive. Okay. At least anytime you send out an email where somebody has to click on something to continue, you're going to lose people right gotcha. there. Okay. Yeah. But the overall idea was that, you know, and ask yourself if this is true for you. Mm-hmm. For me personally, if somebody has me double opt-in or single opt-in, you know, for me, after the first email, I don't even remember who did what. You're absolutely right. I'm the same way. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember. Oh, these people have me double opt-in, so I'll be more responsive. You know, it doesn't make sure. any sense. Sure, sure. So, anyways, that's uh, there's really no reason to do double opt-in, except okay. it makes your email service, if you're using Aweber or someplace like that, mm-hmm. it makes them a little more secure. And that's one of those kind of odd sort of, you know, it's good to do single opt-in for the individual, but it's good to do double opt-in for the group. Mm-hmm. And so the only thing I really say is, hey, just make sure you're sending out good quality content and you're not contributing to the overall problem of spam. Right. And single opt-in would, would it'll work better for you. It'll okay. Serve you better. Okay, that makes a that makes a thousand percent uh, sense. Uh, I can see where that would uh, really make a difference. 